Hey everyone, we're in the kitchen again. I just wanted to quickly take the time to introduce another project. I have way too many projects on the go at once. Um, I bought this, which is a 1962, I think, not completely shown here, Dallas Scala amplifier. It's uh, 5 to 8 watts of output, um, 2 channels. I say two channels, it's actually it's one channel with two inputs. Um, designed to take multiple instruments, but primarily guitar. Um, like I say, these were manufactured in London by a company called Dallas, which later became, I think, Dallas Arbiter, um, between the late 50s and early 60s. Uh, I saw this come up at auction, I had no idea whether it was uh, actually working or not, to be quite honest with you. Um, but for 50 quid, an amplifier from 1960 or thereabouts, well it was worth a punt wasn't it? Um, this had originally intended to be an episode of gear acquisition syndrome, um, something I planned to uh, maybe have a little bit of play around with and sell on. Um, I got the amplifier home, turned it on and Instantly I could hear that while it was making a noise, there was a lot of crackle going on. Um, that crackle, I'm not very experienced with these things, but that crackle could have indicated dirty pots, um, as in the volume controls, um, or it could have indicated that the valves were worn out, a few different things. Um, but I persevered, I actually plugged a guitar into it, got a sound out of it, after it had been turned on a little while and the, the crackling sort of clean, cleaned up, it actually sounded really, really nice. I was very surprised because it actually has um, a 6x9 oval speaker, which is very unusual, but it sounded pretty amazing from what I can remember. Um, but that sound lasted all of about 20, 30 seconds before the sound just died away completely to nothing. Um, now... This didn't disappoint me too much because, to be quite honest with you, for ages now I've wanted to get into repairing and building valve amplifiers. And I thought it was an excellent little project with a little bit of history behind it um, to take a look at. Um, so with that in mind, let me show you what I've been doing. Okay, so freehand, here we go. So this is what the internals of the amplifier look like. I've got them out on the bench already as you can see and I have been working on it for some time now. Just to give you a quick look at the front panel. I hope you can see there it's upside down. We've got the two inputs, two volume controls and a tone knob which also actually functions as the power which is a bit odd. Um, the two extra inputs that you can see there were for a tremolo. You could control the speed and uh, the depth of the tremolo, I believe, by a foot switch originally. Upon opening, opening the amp up and comparing it with uh, some photos of another one of these amplifiers, I can see that the, the tremolo board is now completely missing. Um, whether that's because it was removed due to not working or what, I don't know. Um, also of note, by the way, everyone always says, whenever you go on a forum to look at the... and ask, start asking about vam valve amplifiers, they're always very safety conscious because these big capacitors, particularly this one down here, can hold lethal voltages, something like 350 volts, even after the amplifier is turned off. So you have to have a multimeter to hand to make sure that that's discharged completely before you start working on it, which I have been doing, and it is at the moment, so it's quite safe to touch. Um, yeah, so I was very, very lucky, not knowing a lot about amplifiers, to find someone on an online forum who has a long history of designing, building and repairing valve amplifiers who has been helping me through this every step of the way. He even posted me some spare valves to use which is just really fantastic. Um, I can't thank him enough. I'd love to 
sing his praises properly on this video, but I don't want to give out his details in case anyone else starts sort of preying on his kindness or anything like that. But uh, one of the first things he said to me was that we had to uh, make sure that the, the power circuit was operating as it should do. Um, we've got a very old power transformer here, which is made partially of waxed paper. You can see the wax is actually seeping out of the transformer, um, which in itself isn't a problem. It just shows that it's quite old. Um, we've got the 240 volts power supply going into that. And then we have two windings coming off it. One that supplies about 350 to 360 volts and the other which supplies uh, six volts, I think it is, to power the heaters of the tubes. Um, once that AC current comes out of the power transformer, it then becomes the job of the rectifier, which is this little thing here, um, to convert that into DC current. Now, from some initial readings, we weren't sure that the, the voltage coming out the other side of this thing was up to snuff. Um, modern silicon based rectifiers are much more efficient than the selenium ones and the selenium ones are actually also can be quite toxic um, if you look up I think it's selenic acid um, nasty stuff um, so being a very cheap and very easy thing to do I actually uh, made my own little rectifier from diodes it's not very neat I haven't done a lot of this kind of work before but it works and we're getting about 360 volts at the moment out of that thing, uh, DC. Um, so yeah, a lot of sort of head scratching and measuring the pin outs of the various valves. We have one uh, 12AX7 and one EC84, is it? I always get the power one. This is EC83 is a 12AX7, isn't it? Um, shows how much I know. Um, AL thirty four. Yes, it's twelve x seven AL thirty four. The circuit board's actually designed to be able to take a valve rectifier, as you can see in there. But in this case, we've got a solid state rectifier. Um, so, long story short, I think tonight we might have actually found the problem. Um, I won't go right into what everything on the circuit board is doing, but. When we initially took the circuit board out, we noticed that there's actually a resistor. I don't know if you can see that there. There was a resistor hanging loose off the edge of the circuit board like that. Now, we originally assumed because there was a, a tremolo board attached there, that that had been going to the tremolo and the power actually comes in on this red, one of the power supplies comes in on the the red wire here. We'd assumed that the power for the tremolo board had been going off at this point. And it may well have been. Um, but this resistor actually looks like it's been burnt out. Upon further investigation, checking out the, the anodes and the cathodes to the valves, um, they weren't getting the voltage that they required. And when we actually traced it back, um, effectively, this point here where the voltage is actually coming in, there's nothing connected here at the moment. And I think what actually happened is this resistor, because there is normally a resistor here, has been bridging this gap. And due to a power issue, be it a burnt out valve, or the tremolo not being there anymore, something along those lines, it's actually fried that resistor when I've plugged it in. So tonight we're going to uh, put a new resistor in, uh, possibly some new tubes as well, check our voltages and maybe the thing will spring to life. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. And to be honest with you, this thing sounded so great when we get it working again, if it sounds as fantastic as it did, I'll do a little demo for you and we may end up keeping the thing, but for now, that's the amplifier. <laughs> 